Well, greetings and welcome to our Sabbath school. Is that my video? Um, um, okay. I don't know why it's telling me to do that. Okay. Uh, I guess I need to leave one join. Leave one open my page. Oh, my page, yeah. Okay. I guess I have... Uh, greetings and welcome to Sabbath School. This is uh, in that Our deep dive, our sink the shaft deep Sabbath School lesson study. Sorry for that. Um, that mishap. Now the page is open, we're going to uh, play a couple of songs and then we join you again. Zoom fully. Ah. All right, we're on. All right, we just, we will be with you shortly. You can sing along if you want. Speak it's Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Till every dark addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, your name is love, your name is healing, your name is love, break every strong shine through the shadows, like a fire. Oh, yeah. 
Rabbi we are going to begin. It seems to be 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what's wrong with my screen. I'm not sure. But I'm not getting a good screen tonight, so let me see. But, um, okay. All right. Oh, my God. I'm getting this light. All right. Well, Queen and I are here. And we are going to uh, go right into our Sabbath school lesson. Uh, we will be doing the quarterly, uh, quarterly. Uh, so we gotta just do that while I pull up our deeper depths um, portion here. We'll take the first. One Sabbath afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> I like this because I can just read the text from the uh, screen. All right, we have a couple of scripture passages. Uh, it's uh, first of all, let us um, <clears throat> let's read the memory first, and then we'll use that as a prayer text. Uh, Taken and tried is is the uh, is lesson number eleven as you're seeing there if you're seeing my screen well and a few texts it is in uh, Mark we're in Mark Mark fourteen John twelve Romans two Romans eight Exodus twenty four. Jeremiah 31, Zechariah, so 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 scriptures, I think those would naturally be the adding of all the topics that we will be looking at. Are the memory text says, I'll read that for us. <coughs> this is in New King James Version, but Mark six <coughs> Mark fourteen verse thirty-six says, and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Okay, so here's Christ asking the will of the Father to take the cup now this. Shifting here, now we're gonna bow down and pray, and I'll have to adjust back my stuff because it is shifting the camera. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Okay, that should do it. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. Uh, as we come, Lord, may we empty our Lord, put them down at the foot of the cross, and be empty vessels for you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with your love, and your compassion, and your grace. All that you have done at the cross, Lord, you didn't. Put away this cup, you drank it to the dregs for us, and we are grateful. Let's have a feet that will stop by here tonight and help that as we sharpen ourselves, the Holy Spirit will sharpen us in your word, because we know it's always good to be in your word. Uh, we thank you. For hearing and answering in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, uh, um, I know 
this is let's say summer school quarterly and summer school lesson study. It's always good to interact in our classes in church on Sabbath mornings. It's not good to just sit and don't participate because we know sometimes we can learn from everyone, every every comment that we can get. Mm -hmm. The Lord makes us social beings, made us social beings, and He gives us different um, <clears throat> talents. And so no one is exempt. Everyone's um, word counts. And so <clears throat> we are just going through it to, and going through some additional related um, spirit of prophecy references. Uh, that's that too we need to sharpen up on the spirit of prophecy reference. <clears throat> now from what we are seeing here, if I can get this thing adjusted. Uh, right. If I can just get this thing adjusted. Uh, all right, where am I, where am I? Get a bit. Right. Put it like that. And then move it down. All right. <coughs> okay. So that's all we have. Uh, then I have to go to this page. But we can go from the book anyway. We don't have to uh, concentrate on the screen. So. Those of you in the book, we're going to, you want to take um, Sabbath evening. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Go right ahead. Chapters 14 to 16 in Mark are known as the Passion Narrative because they describe the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As noted in this nine, the last six chapters of Mark, cover only about one week. The majority of events in Mark 14 to 16 occur on Thursday and Friday of this Passion Week. Jesus' death will occur on Friday and his resurrection on Sunday. This week's lesson focuses on Mark 14 beginning with the fifth sandwich story which interlinks two opposite actions in relation to Jesus. This is followed by the Last Supper, followed by Jesus' struggle in Gethsemane. Then he is arrested and taken before the leaders to be tried. The trial scene is linked with Peter's denial of Jesus, forming the sixth and last of that sandwich stories in Mark. Again, two opposite actions occur, but by an ironic twist, they affirm the same truth. Throughout the narrative, two contrasting story plots march hand in hand. In a crisp style, Mark sets before the readers, the reader, these clashing plots while revealing the triumph of Jesus. So that is Sabbath afternoon. Sabbath afternoon. All right. Um, <coughs> we have a few references of the Zaf ages. Six fifty-two. And Acts of the Apostles 14, two short ones, so we're just going to read them. Um, okay. All right, we're just going to read those. It says here, in the first one is, the Zerf 652. The Christ was standing at the point of transition between two economies and their two great festivals. He, the spotless Lamb of God, was about to present himself 
as a sin offering, that he would thus bring an end the system, bring to an end the system of types and ceremonies that for four thousand years had pointed to what? To his death. As he ate the Passover with his disciples, instituted in its place the service that was to be a memorial of his great sacrifice. The national festival of the Jews was to pass away forever. The service which Christ established was to be observed by his followers in all land and throughout all ages. That's it. And then the last short part here said in Acts of the Apostles 14. Through the teachings of the sacrificial service, Christ was to be uplifted before all nations, and all who would look to him should live. Christ was the foundation of the Jewish economy. The old system of types and symbols was a compact prophecy of the gospel, a presentation in which were bound up the promises of redemption. So the Jewish economy, the farming, and when those of us who have studied this, the um, harvest <coughs> subject would have known this, the, the Jewish economy, the way they farm, the way they farm, the way they reap, the way they um, <coughs> First of all, the way they plant, they, they watch the seasons. The seasons uh, and the, 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 the agricultural, um, the whole economy, because they obviously it, a large part of their, uh, their lifestyle was to farm, farming. And so the, the, the sowing, the reaping, the sowing, the growing period, the reaping, which is harvest, the removal of the tears at the beginning of the harvest, because they would normally remove the tears before, or the weeds before they, they bring in all that conglomeration, in, instead of bringing a conglomeration of, of stuff, they would do mm. that. So what he's saying that the whole economy, Christ set that up and he was the foundation of that. That means he ordained the Jewish economy. Now, secondly, regarding the first reading, it shows us, as we correspond with the, what the quarterly said there, um, it shows us too that he, he actually had <clears throat> one phase of this festival to go away. Which phase was that? And he, he, he instituted one and put away one. The, 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 the years of sacrifice. He said, as he ate the Passover his with his disciples, he instituted in its place. So we don't have the Passover again, right? No. So, how is it that we have people keeping Passover. Would they be <clears throat> in line with this? Because the Word of God says, He instituted in its place, in the place of what? The Passover. As He ate the Passover with His disciples, He instituted in its place the service that was to be the memorial of His great sacrifice. So instituted what? 
this, the um, communion, right? Service. So the Passover service was done. And the pa because he was the Passover lamb. Is not so? Very good. Are you with me? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go to Sunday. There's, if anybody has a, you have any more point there on that section, just make sure my camera is on so others can see what we are showing. All right, so the camera is picking up something. You can zoom it in and you'll get it and read for yourselves. So um, there was no lamb. There was no lamb. Right, there was no lamb except him. Right. Because he was sub taking him. over that position. Mm -hmm. um, well, there was a didn't they? Did the, 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 lamb, the lamb run away, right? When when did the lamb run away? When he was... Yeah, when the priest was in the... Yeah, <laughs> the lamb... Please, <laughs> ran away. <laughs> <coughs> because Putting an end to that Jewish tradition. Yes, yeah, so that system. He stood between the two. One was representing him, one was pointing to... Uh, and then one was the reality, yeah. the picture. All right, so let's go to Sunday. Here we are, Sunday. Sunday's text says, Mark 14, 1 to 11. Yes. And uh, it says, what two stories are intertwined here? And how do they play off one another? Right. Each other. Mark 14 and to 11. I right, After two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Uh huh. <laughs> Then these are church people plotting murder at this oh. high festive fe feast, <coughs> mm -hmm. a party. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she break the box and poured it on his head. Mm -hmm. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me, for ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may be, ye, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She is come aforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. Verse 11 and last. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the priests conspire among themselves mm -hmm. and there was right in the camp of Christ there was a uh, betrayer. <clears throat> what can we learn from that? We will betray, we will betray one another. <clears throat> 
Let's let's read Sunday and see. Welcome, that's brother Ralph. Welcome, my brother. We are on Sunday, just finished. Sabbath evening. Um, this thing so awkward. It says Mark. 14 verse 1 indicates that the Passover was two days away. This meeting probably occurred on either Tuesday night or Wednesday of that week. The religious leaders have a plan and timing. They, were, they just need a means to accomplish their goal. It will come from a surprising quarter. This message is a fifth sandwich story in Mark. The story of the plot against Jesus is linked with a story of a woman who anoints Jesus' head. So one wanted his head taken off and one anointed the head. Two, okay. two players. Two parallel characters do opposite actions displaying an ironic contrast. Alright. So I said the woman is not revealed by Mark. Yeah. Amazing gift to Jesus, and in contrast to Judas. Okay, yes. Perfidy. <coughs> Go ahead, read, uh, read that, and then I read. Uh, you finish? Um, so, it's, 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 Judas. Eh? Yeah. Go ahead. Her amazing gift to Jesus stands in contrast to Judas's perfidy, betraying his Lord. She is unnamed. He is named as one of the twelve. The value of her gift is listed. Her, his price is only a promise of money. No specific reason is given why she does this. But the guests at the dinner were, are appalled by what they consider a grand waste of close to a year's wages, pouring out the perfume on Jesus. Jesus, however, interposes in her defense and says that what she has done will be included in gospel proclamation throughout the world as a memorial of her. It is unforgettable indeed. All four gospels tell the story in one form or another, probably because of Jesus' word, memorializing her deed. Judas' betrayal also is unforgettable. Mark implies that his motive was greed. The gospel of John makes it explicit in John 12, 4-6. Mark contains a play on the word good in order to illustrate that two different motives or plots are in play in these stories. Jesus called the woman actions good, beautiful. He said you can always do good for the poor. In Mark, he calls her deed part of the good news gospel. Judas looks for a good opportunity to betray, to betray Jesus. What this play on words suggests is that the plot of men to destroy the Messiah will actually become part of the gospel story because it brings to fruition the will of God in giving his son for the salvation of humanity. Alright, so right away what's jumping out there? The the um appreciation that the woman showed to the Redeemer. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> here she is just a woman on the side, so to speak. Um, let's talk about her. Uh, the, the, the lesson brought her the comparison with her and Judah, with and Judas. We know that um, <clears throat> it's like East and West. Uh, because there's no comparison really, but you know, just to show the heart, um, mm -hmm. the heart or uh, the difference. Now, Christ was with them, or with the disciples all this time. Um, before I read the the Zelf ages, or the, the <coughs> it's not even the well, some is from um, some other references there. Uh, CTR page 250. Christ, uh, I don't know if that's not Christ or righteousness, maybe Christ or righteousness. I'll see that though, but we have some reference. But um, 
here's this woman. It, mm. it, it would seem funny to us that she just came by and started rubbing on Christ with her hair that, and all that. But from what we are seeing, Christ needed that, right? Oh yes, and not his body. And you know, it just factor into what I, what I was saying this, this tonight. And that I was... I, I started thinking about the power of women as missionary, you know, and um, I happened to run into a discussion of women, women discussion, and they were talking about Genesis. They were talking about Genesis, the, the, the Genesis, the, the verse that talks about the, uh, the woman was made for the man. And I listened to them and they, they were going deep because these are educated women, the women, they were going deep and bringing out the Hebrew and factoring these things. But the, essentially what the crooks of what they were saying is that these women, the woman was made for Adam as an me. And they were expressing or going into that to say, this help that God saw that man needed could not be done by him. In other words, he couldn't help himself the way the woman can, could help him. And that's and that's bring and that that brought out the importance of the woman in that scenario, as she was she was made, and then she she should be respected, and and she if she if she operate if she understood her place, her position of honor, and her position of authority that she is given. <clears throat> because a lot of women don't understand what they have, the power that they have. <clears throat> and a lot of men take, men take it for granted. So Mary brought that out as she, as she attended to Christ in that psychological moment in that moment of agony, in that moment when he needed it. And it's like no, no, no other person could have done that. Anybody see that? Any comment on, on that before I read? <laughs> now Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. There came unto him the woman having the alabaster box and all that. And so I'm going to just, you find it in Matthew 26. I'm just going to peruse. <clears throat> Jesus is, Jesus, the world's redeemer, is drawing close to the time when he will give his life for a sinful world. Yet, how little did even the disciples realize what they were about to lose, right? So, again, what does this imply? That they didn't value, they didn't see the value. But the woman saw, Mary saw that, and she appreciated that, and she responded to that. Isn't that something, when you, are, when you can when you can, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you can observe or not observe, I'm looking for. You don't really know how. Yes, go ahead, brother. When I look at the, you know, when you look at what the Judas did, what the woman did, you know, we're looking at values. 
And what the woman did, the oil, the value of the oil alone was far more than what Judas did. Judas did so He wanted so, so much peace to that silver and gold. But the value of the, the, the oil, she, she poured all that oil, alabasca oil, and it was in a, in, in a joke expensive. And she didn't think about the value. People think, well, she was wasting it. No, she, she was showing the love that she had for Jesus. And she, it, was not, it was not a waste because she was putting it on Jesus. So I look at that, I look at the, the, that part and the contrast is it, it, far beyond when Judas went to the Judas to the betraying or the betraying the Lord, but he was bad. his motive was far different to the woman. The woman motive was pure love. You know, that's how I look at it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, <clears throat> as you say that too, as you refer to the, the cost, he could have, he could have off, he, I mean, in terms of the cost, he could have, he could have offered a hundred pieces of silver. He could have, he could have as well asked for a hundred pieces of silver and they would give him. But he, he, he looked at, in other words, his impression of Christ was cheap. Mm -hmm. As you raise that point, thirty pieces of silver. Yeah, he could have. He could have asked for. You know, a thousand. But he wasn't putting any value on Christ. When the woman now pay, as as you said, I think the the. the, the Dollar value is calculated regarding what she spent, but she saw the value. She, in other words, as as inspiration is saying, here, she she saw the what they she was they were really gonna lose, or, you know. But they didn't see that. In Judas worse. He was so blind. Yeah. Uh, this is deep, though. This is the. <coughs> because it was for his, for his price was only a promise of money. Was his price a promise? It was his, his price was only a promise of money. Yeah. Well, well, what was the money? There it is. He got the money. He got the blood money. And it didn't. And he was trying to give it back. It is true to me. <laughs> so. It is true. Yes. So. In other words, his value of Christ's life, and, the, and not only his, his value of the, the, the friendship, but, and, and we have to broaden this you know, and bring it home. The value of our wives, the value of our husband, the, the value. Do take yes. We don't place the value of human lives. Today we don't have, there's no value on you know, we don't see the value that God has placed in these things. Worse in his, and so, you know, it comes from that. And um, as Christians, go ahead, Barra. What I'm saying is, you can't put a value on the wife. <laughs> you can't put a value in love. love. No, you can't put a money value, but the value that Christ, that, that is, you know, yeah. You can't evaluate. No. But it goes to show that man tries to, you know, cheapen and devalue, dehumanize. As we are having in this country, some people are like, you know, some people are uh, uh, disposable, you, are, you can use and throw away. Yes. Yes, so these things are, I mean... Can you, you know, when you that, can you give your life for your wife? Right. You know, these are the you're talking about. Your life, yes. Yeah. <laughs> can you give your life for Jesus? 
that he would retrieve your boy did that. They did that. Uh, <coughs> I should have, can you give your life for your wife? You had a, no, that is the, that is the value you're talking about. Yeah. You can't do that, then, then you really don't understand love. You don't understand, no. No, you don't know about love. And that, would be, that is the only woman, the woman give, give the death. Give the death. And then, they, they figure, well, she, she, she shouldn't do all of that. Yeah. It says Judas uh, Mary by Mary by the Holy Spirit power saw in Jesus. So we have to allow the Holy Spirit. You see, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. You see, we can't play church. You know. When we play church, we are just masquerading because we don't allow what God wants for us to be for us. We don't allow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. because said Mary. By the power, by the powerful, the Holy Spirit saw in Jesus one who had come to seek and to save the souls that were ready to perish. Every one of the disciples should have been inspired with a similar devotion. Manuscript 28. So, you see... When we play church, uh, you know, and just, just go through the motion, uh, it is risky, it is, it, is, it is terrible. Judas now betrayed his master. He did not expect that Christ would allow himself to be taken. That me to understand his message, you're not listening to him. Mm -hmm. Often he has seen the scribes and Pharisees as Jesus taught them the truth in parable, carried away with the striking figures presented. When, question, when questions were given for their decision, they had to pronounce judgment against themselves, condemning the course they themselves were pursuing. How often when Christ had made the application of the word to their own hearts and showed they were and showed they were the ones he was illustrating before the people, the plain truth sent home and wrangled in their mortification and madness they had taken up stones to cast at the world's redeemer again and again he would have been killed had it not been for the heavenly angels who attended him and guarded his life until the time when the case of the jews as a nation should be decided so they were, they were carrying out their, <clears throat> their um, deeds, but they were fulfilling their own judgment at the same time. Alright, we're going to move right along. That's Next. The whole, so that's the main reason for the yeah. question. When it takes a seat, you force the kingdom of God. Now you see, you might be doing something, and I pointing at you, pointing at you, and you know, judging you. They say, judge no man. Judge no man. I'm not judging. So, I'm not looking at what you're doing, but you are deep down in. I know the things that you're doing is not about God. So I need to know, as a brother keep, I need to pray for you. I don't need to pull you down or to cry you down. And because... You're not seeking God. So uh, I do think to help, to help you to seek for righteousness instead of pulling you down and say, you know, you're not treating your wife good and you're not doing that. Mm -hmm. So uh, these things is where I judge him and I put in more pressure on him. So in, in a sense, what, what we need to do when we see is to, in, the, in the Christian realm, is seeking God and, and seeking God is obeying God and doing the God says and all other things will fall in line because if you if you have Christ in you all other things will fall in line. Mm 
Yeah. Everything that you use, nobody has to say point your finger and say that you're treating your lady bad or you're treating the son. No, because everything will, you, you will do everything according to command. Yes, it's all in the process of seeking yeah. seek the kingdom. Because, you know, God instructs you to see the kingdom. You love your neighbor, love as you love yourself, do unto others as they would, you would like. Yes, yeah, so there is a package you get. Do that, do, and then, you know, you will be fulfilling all sides. You wouldn't be like, like you're ignoring anything. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we do Monday. Monday, the Last Supper. Uh -huh. Mark fourteen twenty two to twenty one. Last supper. The last supper. <laughs> and as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, "Take eat. This is my body." And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is said for men. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung on him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Jesus said unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. But it is written, I will smite thee, shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered but after that i will after that i am risen i will go before you into galilee but peter said unto him although all be offended yet will not i and jesus said unto him verily i say unto you this day even in this night before the cock crows twice thou shalt deny me thrice okay Notes that this you have, you have a comment? No, this is the first day of unleavened bread. What's unleavened bread? Because the Passover would have leavened would have well unleavened bread and then we'll have leavened bread. Think about that. When the Passover lamb was sacrificed, it said note this note that this is the first day of unleavened bread. How many days of unleavened bread and what is unleavened bread? Okay, consider that the Passover lamb was sacrificed. The meal was on Thursday evening. At the Last Supper, Jesus instituted a new memorial service. Well, we read that in the first section. It is a transition from the Jewish Passover celebration and is directly linked to Israel leaving Egypt and becoming God's covenanted, covenant people in Sin at Sinai. In the sealing of the covenant in Exodus 24, 8, Moses sprinkled the people with the blood of the sacrifices and say, Behold the blood of the holy blood of the covenant. Come on. Move this thing. The holy blood of the covenant. <clears throat> Moses spoke to the people with the blood of the sacrifice and said, Behold the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. In the sprinkling, in the sprinkling that the Lord that in the Lord's Supper, which Jesus instituted here, no use is made of the lamb of the Passover meal. That is because Jesus is the lamb of God. Mm -hmm. You can compare that with John 1, 29. The bread of the Lord's Supper represents his body. The new covenant compared with Jeremiah 31 and say is sealed with the blood of Jesus and the cup represents this he says this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for 
many. <clears throat> then amid all this, Jesus predicts that his disciples will abandon him. He cites Zechariah 13. <clears throat> Zechariah 13, 7, which says, Strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered, and I will turn my hand again against the little ones. Which speaks of the sword striking the shepherd and the sheep being scattered. Jesus is a shepherd, and his disciples are the sheep. <clears throat> uh, it is a stark and depressing message, but Jesus adds a word of hope, repeating the prediction of his resurrection. But he adds that he will go before the disciples of, to Galilee. That, predi that prediction will be referred to by the young man at Jesus' tomb in Mark 16 and verse 7. What's that? It says, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him and as he said to you. That, that, that is from Mark. I'm trying to navigate what this thing is moving up and down. All right. <clears throat> Where is it now? Okay. Go on, go, go on with that, the book. Tuesday. No, it's not Tuesday. But, but all this is too hard. But all this is too hard for the disciples <laughs> to accept, especially Peter who argues that everyone else may fall away, but he will not. However, Jesus continues with the solemn language and predicts that Peter will deny him three times before the cro rooster crows twice. The prediction will play a crucial role in the scene of Jesus' trial and Peter's denial. So it also plays a crucial, crucial role, role here. What can you learn from whatever times you promise God? that you would or would not do something and ended up doing or not doing anything. Mm -hmm. well, Some people break their promises so frequently. Go ahead. Question. Yes. 